Hello, science fans, and welcome to Sciencia. Do you ever wonder what it's like to be in the wonderful world of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? Let us hear from our sheroes, experts, students, and aspiring STEM advocates about what it's like to be passionate about science and technology. Join us in today's episode where we discuss what it's like to be a science communicator in the Philippines. The Philippines, despite its beauty and biodiversity, despite the resilience and loveliness of its people, is not the easiest place to do science in. We often have logistical issues on project implementation because of systemic issues on budget as well as procurement. But then again, these have improved over time. But what's worse, and is more difficult to solve, is that the Filipino people, and even its government officials, seem to so easily disregard scientific advice and funding, and would much rather listen to alternative and fake news from other sources. Of course, this problem is rooted on deep systemic issues on education, literacy, the influence of religion, poverty, and so much more. And as scientists, it is so easy and so tempting to spiral into self-pity and hopelessness. As gigantic as the problem may seem, it doesn't mean that there's nothing we can do to help improve the reputation and acceptance of science in the Philippines. Because you see, beyond our responsibilities in the lab, on field, in the classroom, or in the office, we can also aim to communicate our science better. Now, science communication is special because beyond seeking to inform and increase awareness about scientific principles, it also seeks to cultivate amazement and appreciation of scientific discoveries and arguments. Science communication goes beyond the straightforward presentation of data and translates them to something meaningful, relevant, and powerful. Science communication brings attention to the sciences following two paradigms or mechanisms, through dissemination or through participation. In the context of dissemination, science communication aims to successfully transmit information about science from experts to the public. The most common channel for transmission of this information is formal education. The implications of the focus on formal education includes the initiation in many countries of extensive revisions of national science curricula. So when the Philippines transitioned from K-10 to K-12 education recently, our educators tried to employ the spiral curriculum in order to improve the teaching of the sciences. The spiral curriculum refers to a design where key concepts are presented repeatedly throughout the curriculum but with deepening layers of complexity or in different applications. The design is advantageous because it allows the students to go through different fields of science throughout their entire stay in elementary or high school. However, due to the inherent biases of the students because they think that science is hard or boring, it actually leads to the students becoming more frustrated with the subject and also it leads to superficial learning. Our educators are then challenged to find ways to stimulate the interest of our students regardless of what curriculum is being employed. Because after all, the science shouldn't just appeal to the mind, but to the heart as well. And now that we are in the 21st century, beyond the confines of school, we can harness all the power of multimedia. Together with the internet, we have expanded the potential exposure of individuals of all age groups, from books, magazines, and TV, to blogs, social media, and YouTube. But what makes science communication unique compared to the usual means of scientific reporting is its awareness that the worldview or context that a person is grounded in will affect his or her perception of science. And thus, scientific communication goes beyond transmission of facts, but is also about designing the message to maximize the chances of getting attention, 
sympathy, or acceptance from the target audience. And another powerful mechanism or paradigm of science communication to break the barriers that separate scientists from the rest of the world is through allowing a two-way dialogue between scientists and the general public or even in the inclusion of a wide number of people when we do our research. Enlisting the public in collecting large quantities of data in many places over long spans of time is called citizen science. Through citizen science, we can help people appreciate the science behind phenomena occurring in their local communities, as well as make them feel included in something bigger that can have far-reaching consequences or applications. Commercial break! Now, if you're a member of a student organization and are interested to be part of a citizen science venture to bring awareness on how our consumption patterns in this COVID-19 pandemic has aggravated our plastic problem, then clear your schedules for December 11, 2020. We have prepared for you a workshop, contest, and forum that will allow you to help control our plastic pollution problem. Please visit the Echo Squad Goals social media pages on Facebook and Instagram or email me at shauna.abiledo at dlsu.edu.ph to learn about the details. We at DLSU, together with UNESCO, would like to show you that it's worth it to change our behavior so that we can better take care of the environment. So, tara na! Echo Squad Goals na! Which brings us to today's Shiro. I first met her when I volunteered for her organization, Science Kidfic Explorers, where we would bring science to kids by teaching them fun experiments and science principles behind them. It has since transitioned to become Agham Kwan, one of the most amazing science communication advocacies here in the Philippines. Hello, science fans! My name is Karina La Rosa, and I'm a science communicator. It certainly is exciting to have Carrie in this video. After all, she was one of the inspirations for Shiensha. So given her influence, I wonder what made Carrie fascinated with the field of STEM? So. I wasn't always passionate about STEM. In fact, I even told myself that I'll be taking psychology back in college to avoid maths, which wasn't really the case at all. Um, it's weird how I got into science. I was only reading this book by Dan Brown, which mentioned a lot of space stuff. And after that, I saw myself being curious about space, rockets, astronomy. Back then, I thought maybe there was still a chance for me to become a scientist. And while it's free to dream, I also had to accept that this was not going to happen to me anymore. But that did not put me down at all. You know, I started volunteering for a science museum and I felt the joy of demonstrating and teaching science experiments and concepts to the museum guests. So even if I can't be a scientist anymore, I could still teach my love and passion for science. So eventually, I told myself I wanted to quit my job, which was a human resource management job that time, and got into teaching. Since then, I have been teaching um, kindergarten, grade school children, and now I'm teaching science and risk communication to undergraduate students in a university. One of the worst misconceptions that prevents the successful dissemination of information about the sciences is the thought that only scientists should talk about science. But what amazes me about Carrie is how amazed her audience are whenever she talks about science principles that she's fascinated about. But I wonder what other misconceptions or stereotypes she's encountered in the field. So I think the most common stereotype about science communication is that it's just all about science writing or journalism. And that's understandable, especially in the context of the Philippines, wherein science communication is still growing. Science communication isn't just about journalism. There are many ways to communicate science. You can go for media, making videos, making creative content, or radio, making a podcast, interviewing a scientist. Or you could be like me, a public engagement professional where I communicate science by creating science shows, educational programs, science kits, board games, songs. So there are many ways out there and you know all you have to do is explore. You'll never know until you try. The field of science communication in the Philippines is wide open, exciting, 
and ready for expansion. But to fully prepare our young future science communicators, we have to be able to forewarn them about the potential difficulties that they can face. So, I asked Carrie, our Shiro for today, what difficulties she has encountered as a science communicator in the Philippines. The most difficult aspect of being a science communicator in the Philippines is that the field isn't that strong yet. In a way, it's still growing. There aren't many opportunities yet where you can have a career in science communication unless you freelance or establish your own startup or you will have to do it for just passion or a hobby or you're gonna have to wait for a long time until you get a job in science communication. So for me right now, my full-time job is not related to science communications and that's because the bills aren't gonna pay for itself, you know? What I do right now is just I take part-time jobs on the side that's related to science communication and I'm more than satisfied with that. Doing anything of value is certainly never easy, but it is definitely worth all the blood, sweat, and tears. Seeing people appreciate the applications of biotechnology in their lives, or watching children connect scientific principles with the games that they play are some of the most beautiful aspects of science communication for me. But I wonder what could be the most fulfilling aspect of being a science communicator is for Carrie. I could say that being a science communicator in the context of the Philippines is very rewarding. I view it as social work. I do it because I want to help and serve the community through science engagement and education. I have been given so much in life um, and I have seen all of it, you know, I've seen people who aren't able to access education, people who can eat three times a day, and I just want to give back to them. You know? I don't have much in terms of financial capabilities, but I still want to be able to give back. And also because the field is still growing, it gives an opportunity for people like me to contribute and get myself out there. And that's the good thing about a growing industry. It's easy to get yourself known out there and network. The Philippines needs to fall in love with the sciences. And naturally, charismatic scientists who have the time and energy to go into science communication are rare. So we need trained individuals like Carrie who can share their passion with other people especially our policymakers, so that we can create projects and plans that can help in the improvement of the Philippines that is sustainable. So, let's hear one more time from our Shiro for today about her message to young Filipinas who are interested to go into the field of STEM or science communication. So my message to Filipinos and Filipinas who are interested to go into STEM or science communication is just to go for it. And when you do, please do not forget kindness and humility. Science in general is already portrayed as an elitist field, so let's try to be inclusive as much as possible. Um, be humble with your work, always analyze things by thinking about everyone, and by everyone I mean not just people who have access to education, access to internet, people who can eat three meals a day. Think about those who can't read, those who don't go to school, those who are financially incapable and those who are just not science enthusiasts. That's the thing, you know, not everyone will be passionate about science, but you as a scientist or a science communicator, you want to ensure that they are able to appreciate the things that the science, uh, the science commu community has been able to contribute to society and that they value curiosity and skepticism above all. This is not an easy task, but again, please do not forget that you are a scientist, you are not God. Please always remind yourself to stay kind and humble. Thank you so much to our Shiro for sharing with us your time, your experiences, and for helping empower young women in the field of STEM. It truly is amazing to find out what it's like to be a science communicator in the Philippines. To our viewers, I hope you were able to learn something new from our short video today, which ends Season 2 of Shiencia's What It's Like series. If you did, I hope you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Thank you very much, happy holidays, and see you around!